and uh, you're doing a workshop on it. So when you do a workshop, basically you you uh, in front of a crowd of people and you teach people how to play, or they're just there to watch you play. Or what well, is a workshop? Well, some people usually a workshop. I don't know. I've been disillusioned by workshops because whenever they tell me to do a saw workshop, nobody ever brings their saws. I'm the only guy with a saw. So it turns out to be like a mini concert. Plus, you know, I show them how I do it and stuff. Okay. So. Now this, let me. This saw is a, a regular saw. Yeah. This camera on. This is just a Stanley Handyman, <laughs> which I bought in a hardware store, and I hope Stanley pays me for whatever I right. sell for them. And, so, <laughs> and how do you tune a saw? Well, it's easier than tuna fish. I'll tell you that. But. Uh, very carefully. Okay. Now the secret all lies in the way you bend it. I can't really, we don't have enough time to really get how to bend it, but it's an S-curve and you you got the teeth pointing in at you and you bow on the side without teeth, otherwise you go through lots of bows. And okay, it's now very expensive. one other question, can you use it with other hardware or does it have to be a saw? Well, no, uh, I've seen people use like little padded mallets. And they, you know, they kind of just tap it oh, or cool. uh, I've seen people just take a, uh, a a twig off of a tree or something and rosin that twig up and drag that branch <laughs> along the blade you know so you can do all kinds of things but the violin bows work the best and now this is this considered a folk instrument is it uh... well yeah yeah in a sense it's more of a vaudevillian type thing but it's definitely uh, you don't plug it in okay. <laughs> you know Except when you play the chainsaw, but I only use that for my new wave act. Okay. And uh, you bend it, and you you move the bow according to the bend. So, otherwise, uh -huh. see if you're bending up here and you're going for this note, and you're bowing down here, you won't get anything. Uh -huh. You got it all right where to bow. So there's different things going on, and also when you notice. When I shake my foot, it's not because I'm nervous or because I've got to <laughs> pee or something. It's actually part of the technique. The director's going, oh, my God. But uh, see, without shaking my foot, you get a flat sound. But when I vibrate it, <laughs> it's kind of exciting. That's you know? funny. I'll play a selection that's off of that record. Okay. It's, I have a accompanying guitar with it, you know, four guitar parts going as well, so it's kind of a raw form, but still it's entertaining. It's, it's a Kansas folk tune. <laughs> Not really, but... <laughs> okay. sharpen it, bring it up in pitch a little bit. That's better. You can laugh. Now, who ever taught you how to play a song? <laughs> this is self-taught. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, no you got to be kidding. Oh, really? I mean, I've, I've, uh, I saw, the first time I ever heard a saw was, in, was on uh, Steve Rath's old show on NPR Folks Festival USA. Mm -hmm. So I never really saw a saw being played. I've heard it. 
And then I, I sent for this musical saw, which came with instructions, which I followed. And, and after a lot of my own adjusting, it, it got to work. But then that saw was stolen from me. Oh, really? So. OK, let's, uh, let's bring your auto harp out. We have uh, time for just one more tune. <coughs> OK. And uh, we'll be playing that tune on the way out of the show. But uh, the auto harp is an American instrument, isn't it? Well, it's, the auto harp has a funny history. It was actually invented and patented in Germany by some German guy. But then he moved to America, to Philadelphia. And that's where they were first produced, was out of Philadelphia mm -hmm. in this country. So it's kind of German-American, sort of like that, I guess. Yeah. This is one of the nicest sounding instruments as well. That's pretty sound. Yeah. 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 Uh, OK, and uh, so play us a tune, and then we'll uh, finish up. But let me just thank everybody for tuning in today. L.J. Slavin is the guest. Uh, we do have an album available. L.J. came out with an album a couple years ago. And if you would like a copy of the album, please feel free to get in touch with us here at Cable Tap and Folk Exposure at the address you see on the screen. And uh, LJ, take it away. Okay, what do we got? About two. Here's a uh, here's an instrumental version of uh, Grandfather's Clock minus the ticking part. <laughs> okay. 